everyone. Happy Recovery Day and welcome to Making Changes on Campus. We're both very excited to talk to you today. I'm Dylan Brady, the Manager of uh, Student Conduct and Harm Reduction at Carleton University. And I'm Sarah Crawford, the Sexual Violence Prevention and Harm Reduction Coordinator at Algonquin College. We're going to tell you the story of some of the work being done on our local campuses to support students to make healthy choices about substance use and seek out help if they need it. After that, you're going to have the opportunity to hear from some of our amazing students who help us accomplish this work and speak to the importance of a peer-led approach. Sarah and I cannot possibly accomplish all of this by ourselves, which is why we're going to finish the video by introducing you to some of the partners that we work with on our campus to support our students and make sure that no one gets left behind. We're also very fortunate to have the support from organizations like CAPSA, the CCSA, CAMH, the Royal Ottawa, and Rita Wood Addiction and Family Services. Our students are beginning their journey uh, in post-secondary and it's the first time that many of them will be living away from home. They'll start experimenting with alcohol and other drugs as well as uh, learning about safer substance use. So we want to ensure that they're supported and that we are able to support them while they're taking time and learning about experimentation. Uh, our students are more likely to face reverse stigma because they might abstain from alcohol and other drugs. While they're young it's more encouraged and more tolerated to be drinking or out socializing with peers. And so if they're deciding to abstain from it, they might increase feelings of isolation. And, and this is particularly important um, given that there's CCSA data from 2018 that shows that 50% of youth who have used cannabis or alcohol in the past month indicated experiencing harms related to their use. That's a, a large portion of our campus population that you know, within a month span are, are experiencing harms related to their use. Um, and this makes sense when it shows that youth are often unclear about the potential harmful effects of some of the most commonly used substances, and they regularly report engaging in riskier behaviors when using substances than compared to those who are 25 and older. Um, we're just starting to understand how things like social media dependence or gaming addiction impact this age group in a very distinct way. Um, they often too can exist in this service gap between uh, youth supports and adult services as they're transitioning through this period and it can be sometimes hard for them to seek out help if they're not sure where to go. So all of this to say it's really important that we meet students where they're at and have a harm reduction approach for our students. But what does that look like in a post-secondary campus setting? And that's what's really important. Our harm reduction services that we provide to our students is very different than what we might find in the community. We don't offer things like needle and syringe exchange programs or safer consumption sites, but what we do offer is a very um, thorough conversations with our students about harm reduction. While we're talking about alcohol and other drugs, we talk to our students about what are the safest ways to use substances, as well as um, how they can have conversations with their friends about problematic use. So that's certainly one of our main focuses. And another piece that we focus on is educating about the spectrum of substance use and how it's not a, uh, I'm a drinker or I'm not a drinker, but rather uh, people's substance use exists on a spectrum. Um, their use is likely to change throughout their life, even from day to day, week to week. Uh, and that one, and we start that spectrum at abstinence to acknowledge that there are people for a variety of reasons that choose not to use but that, that scale slides and, and, and people do use recreationally. And then we give them a bit of education around what are some of the signs that your recreational use may start to be impacting your life in other ways and, and to help them express some of those concerns in, in a healthy way. We have fantastic resources such as safer cannabis use, safer cocaine use, um, and those pamphlets are really a fantastic way for our students to come up, have conversations with us and say, oh my gosh, this is the first place I've ever had a conversation about cannabis or about cocaine. The umbrella project came to be because it's an umbrella term, uh, harm reduction is an umbrella term for safer substance use. And so when we talk about um, what's under the umbrella, it's all of the different things of normalizing harm reduction in our everyday life. Some of the things that we do in the initiatives under the umbrella project, uh, we've got lots of swag. So giving away free stuff to our students is one of the best ways to get them in. Our branding can be found throughout campus on everything that we do. And basically our students know to look for that and they can have conversations or find someone safe to talk to about the umbrella project. When you have a lineup of students waiting to come and get some of your swag and they don't even fully realize at the time that they're going to get this shirt that 
Sure, it's a, you know, uh, I, I heart safer partying or something to that effect. But on the back, it actually has harm reduction tips right on the back. And so you can see students really buying into the brand, really buying into uh, things that are gonna help them and their friends stay safe because there are these educational pieces built in. Uh, our counselors now understand harm reduction consultations. So they can provide harm reduction education and consultations with their students. Um, and support them uh, through counseling, as well as referrals to the wider community who are better to support them if, if it's not through our counseling service. So we really are operating um, a whole person approach, making sure that no one is left behind and making sure that our students are engaged with the populations and supports that they need. Uh, Carlton has also partnered with uh, Algonquin to launch our own CU umbrella project in the coming months. The goals of our campus-wide program are going to be to reduce the stigma surrounding substance use and addiction on our campus, uh, promote wellness by providing training and education around safer substance use to Carleton students and staff, and then provide uh, outreach and support to those who may be struggling within our community. Um, I'm also very proud to announce that Carleton is partnered with CAPSA to offer um, the popular All People All Pathways peer support meetings uh, specifically for students and staff at Carleton who may have questions about their use or, or may be concerned about someone who's close to them. Uh, one of the things that we have adapted or started at um, Algonquin College is our Ask an Expert series. It's a Facebook Live event. Um, each week they're tailored to something different, so sometimes it's sexual health, substance use, we're also doing a, a series called Hot Drinks and Hot Topics every Tuesday, and those are, are really engaging conversations uh, that aren't recorded, so they're open and honest. Our students can ask anything that they want. Um, our, we're having a session in a few weeks called Pubs and Drugs, where students can drop in, ask the questions, and make sure that they're supported in any way that they need to be. Over at Carleton, we learned a lot because COVID started to unfold in March, which is already a normally stressful time for our student population. And we were able to, over the summer uh, and into that exam period, really prepare by centralizing all of our information and supports available into a, a quick, streamlined, safer substance use website. Um, we really highlighted things like access to peer support groups that had moved online, so things like AA and Smart Recovery. and and when we were able to uh, provide all people all pathways back again, we really wanted to make sure that that was something students knew that was out there. Um, we did outreach to students around uh, the ways that physical distancing and COVID-19 can impact mental health as well as substance use and how those are all combined in this broader definition of wellness. Um, we also are working very hard and shifting all of our training offerings online and offering students access to, to as many self-assessments that are uh, understanding of the broad spectrum of substance use and online uh, resources like therapy assisted online and breaking free online and it allows them to sort of check in with not just their substance use but their overall mental health because the two are so important and so connected there's no way that we could do this on our own and i'm really excited uh, that next up you're going to have an opportunity uh, to speak to olivia and tina two uh, absolutely amazing uh, peer supports uh, that we've had in our campus environment to learn a little bit more about uh, the peer-led approach that we take here and why that's so important to the success of this project. Thanks. Hi everyone, happy recovery day. Thanks for joining in. Um, we are students at Carleton and we are here today to talk about stigma, addiction, um, substance use, and kind of from more of a student lens slash perspective. So my name is Tina and I work at Carleton in harm reduction. I'm the support staff and also communications assistant for them. I am also a student, of course. I am in the Bachelor of Social Work program. And I'm also a person with lived experience, a student with lived experience. I'm living well with substance use disorder. Hey everyone, I'm Olivia. I'm a recent graduate from Carleton University in the Neuroscience and Mental Health program. During my time at Carleton, I helped create a campaign called Stigma Ends at CU. We use for Carleton University, of course. And the basis of the campaign was to reduce stigma around substance use and addiction. So very fitting for everything that CAPSA stands for and uh, the main objective of Recovery Day. So it's really good to see everyone. Stigma has affected me on so many levels, um, particularly as a student, I would say service levels. So when I was in college years ago, asking for help felt like I wasn't a student anymore, if that makes any sense. All of the people that I put myself around were using quite often, drinking quite often, so it was very hard to see 
myself in that to see uh, do I have an issue? Do I have a problem? Um, why are my friends able to stop and why am I not able to stop? Is there something wrong with me? So it made it harder to see if I actually wanted to get help or if I needed help. Um, because when people see me as a student, you know, oh, well, you're just having fun. You know, you're just, you're, you're just doing your own thing. You're not, you're probably fine. Um, so that was hard talking to service providers to see if I actually could get some help. Later on, when I started at Carleton, I was already in recovery and um, I had been asked to go to some pubs and I had been asked to hang out with my fellow peers and they were using and drinking. And at the time I, I was okay with it personally, but um, it was still a very hard decision to make. And thankfully, most everyone was completely, like they were amazing about it, but a lot of other people, especially in their early recovery, can be made to feel almost ashamed and stigmatized in a completely different manner of, well, why aren't you drinking? Why aren't you smoking this joint with me? Why are you doing this, that, and the other thing? And um, that is incredibly stigmatizing from the other angle and um, not just peer pressure, but hey, this is a cultural expectation of you as a student. Why aren't you participating? It's an incredibly horrible experience for some. Thankfully, I had wonderful friends in school and they were completely understanding and they even asked me if, I, if it was okay, if I was comfortable. And that's my, um, my advice to anyone is try to surround yourself with empathetic people like that. And um, thankfully, that did make the experience a lot better. All People All Pathways, the name says exactly what it is. So for its peer support meetings for people um, who are either already, they could be in recovery, people questioning their substance use, um, friends and family of people who are struggling, um, people who are using and maybe want to cut down, anyone, anyone is welcome. That's why it's All People All Pathways. And so Carlton and CAPSA, um, have a continued partnership with a lot of different things and that's one of them. We decided to start a meeting on campus. We also had a meeting for staff, which I think was incredibly important to realize that it's this is not a separate issue. Um, addiction and uh, problematic or, or unhelpful substance use can affect anyone from any walk of life. Of course, it isn't important to get a student lens on a student perspective, but it can happen to faculty, it can happen to staff, it can happen, it can happen to doctors, nurses, police officers, anyone. Um, as a person with lived experience, I am one of the peer facilitators. So what that means is it's not a group therapy type situation. In this particular aspect, I am by no means a professional. Um, I, I'm on the same level. I'm meeting you where you, you're at. I'm getting as much help from this as someone else who's coming to a meeting. So it's peers supporting each other. Um, while they are not professionals in that sense, they are trained to make sure that we have a safe um, and non-judgmental space to talk about anything that you wish to talk about. The reason why it's a, it, it seems a little bit different and for a lot of people is, is extremely helpful is that you're talking with people that understand exactly what you're going through. Everyone has different experiences during uh, their addiction or during substance use, what have you, but the thoughts and feelings remain often very similar or the same. And so when you're talking with someone that has those same feelings, you feel listened to, you feel a sense of you know community and belonging, and that someone for possibly the first time can see who you truly are and truly understands what you're going through. And that is absolutely amazing. CAPSA um, got the licensing to do some Zoom meetings. So we actually are now having meetings virtually every single week. Um, the information is on the Carlton website. You can just even Google it. It'll show up, I promise you. And in terms of accessibility, um, you don't have to be in the Ottawa area to go to one of these meetings. So that was definitely a bonus to switch to online. You can be anywhere you want to be and you can still come to one of these meetings. Yeah, so Stigma at CU is a campaign or a group on campus um, aimed at reducing and ultimately ending the stigma around substance use and addiction. 
So we are a student-led campaign, which I think is really important to get on the same level as our peers and understand their experience from the student perspective and how, how difficult that can be, how many stressors we're facing as well, uh, in addition to, to personal substance use. So as a group, we offer supports and resources on campus. We try to be a mediator for people who are seeking other, other supports that we can offer them or provide them, whether that's on campus, online, off campus, whatever they need for their current situation. And ultimately, all of all of these initiatives are trying to, to have an open and honest conversation around substance use and addiction and help people understand that it deserves the same parity and the same kind of conversation as, as anything else. And that's where we start to reduce the stigma and, and help the community feel supported. Over the past 10, 20 years, We've come a long way as far as reducing stigma around mental health, which is exceptional to see and very, very important and helpful. However, we're not treating substance use and addiction the same way. And that's the goal of Recovery Day, events like this, and what we're doing on campus for our fellow peers is, is to create that environment for people to speak openly and honestly about their experience so that they can access the supports and resources that they need if that's a path that they want to go down toward recovery. We need to address the fact that whether you choose to use substances or you choose not to use substances or wherever you lie on that spectrum, that's okay. And you're accepted in this community and in this environment. So we treat it substance use as part of the student experience. However, recognizing when it's for pleasure and recreational as opposed to becoming problematic and starting to interfere with, with your, your daily commitments is something that we need to educate on and be more aware of so that students can recognize in themselves and in their peers where that, that line is. And, it, and it's, it's blurry and it's hard to recognize and it's hard to step up and say, hey, I'm questioning my substance use or question a friend's substance use but so long as we're talking about it, we'll all be more comfortable asking these questions. But we're trying to still maintain our social media presence and definitely taking advantage of the digital world right now. We're trying to adapt our, our services that we had previously on campus to online in some capacity and really honing on the, the education piece and the conversation. And we can still have that conversation even if it's not face-to-face. -face. Now more than ever, it's really important to to have this conversation and, and we still are excited to be a huge part of it. Thanks everyone for being here. We're really excited to have you part of Recovery Day and enjoy the rest of today. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hello, my name is Denise Teal. I am a fourth year honors neuroscience and mental health student at Carleton University and I'm currently the president of the Stigma Ends at CU campaign. So harm reduction is so important in the post-secondary setting because it's such a transitional time in students' lives. And harm reduction is necessary as it gives these individuals the tools to make the appropriate decision for themselves and their own experiences. So at the Stigma Ends at CU campaign, we offer a community that's working towards destigmatizing substance use and addiction. We've created a safe and judgment-free community that provides resources to students who are experiencing problematic substance use and a community that they can rely on. And we are targeting exactly where students are always, social media. And with that, our audience is very, very diverse. We have students from all different years and all different faculties. And these individuals include those who are lived and living experiences, those who are allies, and those who are just curious about their own use. And we form our conversations in a way that lends itself towards no one getting left behind and make sure it covers all bases. Anyway, happy recovery day, everyone. Thanks for having me. Hi, everyone. Josh here. I am a former placement student with the Umbrella Project at Algonquin College. And in cooperation with Recovery Day Ottawa, I just wanted to talk to you about harm reduction. So harm reduction is really important to talk about because by talking about it, we normalize it just as binge drinking and smoking a midday joint is normalized in our culture. The more we talk about it, the more um, it becomes more accepting and the more comfortable people will be to approach someone if they are having concerns about their substance use. Hi, my name is Jonas Spadafore and I'm a Residence Life Coordinator at Algonquin College Residence in Ottawa. 
This is my fifth academic year at Algonquin, and I can confidently say that the Umbrella Project has benefited Algonquin immensely and attributed to a culture change within the residents. We understand that these students are in college and they will likely experiment with substances in their new residence home. And that's okay, because it's part of my role to ensure that they're educated in doing so safely. Through the Umbrella Project, we run various educational events for students on how to use substances safely. For example, upon cannabis legalization, we ran an event called Let's Talk About It to ensure students were educated on the safest uses of cannabis. My teammates and I go into every student conduct and support conversation with a judgment-free harm reduction lens. One example of a policy change we have implemented is two years ago, we started only allowing a 12 pack of beer or a 26 ounce of alcohol into residence. The goal here was to reduce the likelihood of binge drinking. Over my time at Algonquin Residence, I have seen a culture change in substance use conversations and mental health conversations amongst both the staff and students. It doesn't work for everyone all the time, but I can say that I do think the Umbrella Project has made a significant positive impact on the Algonquin College Residence community. Hi, my name is Ross Seeger. I'm a special constable with Campus Safety Services. We recognize that there's students that come to the university with a wide range of backgrounds and lived experiences, many of which will experiment with drugs and alcohol. At Campus Safety Services, our first priority is to make sure the university community is safe and well supported. If you're a person who finds themselves in a situation where they're in need of help, Know that we'll attend not as law enforcement officers, but as a human helping another human. We understand the impacts that social isolation has had on the university community and that the fears and anxieties associated with COVID-19 are real. If you need help, please reach out. There's supports available on and off campus. Campus Safety Services is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Thank you. Hi, my name is Meg Gilbertson and I'm the Health Promotion Coordinator in the Carleton University community. Harm reduction is incredibly important in a post-secondary setting because it meets people where they're at. It's something that really resonates to me in my work in the public health space because respect is foundational. The Health Promotion team is a great resource for increasing knowledge and understanding around topics such as substance use and we're a bridge to the many available services available through the Carleton and Greater Ottawa community. The most important thing we can collectively do to reduce stigma around substance use and mental health is to keep talking openly about these topics and experiences. Stigma and shame arise when we feel like we can't talk openly about these topics. And it is the collective work of the community to normalize these conversations so that anyone who's looking for support with substance use or their mental health feel comfortable coming forward. Health promotion has shifted our student support from in-person programming and workshops to entirely online this school year. So you can stay connected with our work through the handle at Carleton Wellness on both Instagram and Facebook or enroll in our virtual workshop through CU Learn by searching for student mental health and well-being. We're working to support topics like harm reduction and mental health in a variety of virtual spaces this year so that we can make sure that no one gets left behind. Hi everybody, I'm Benoit Juan Bacon. I'm a professor of psychology and president of Carleton University. I was also a substance user for a long time and it's really important to me to support CAPSA and Recovery Day Ottawa and all our efforts here at Carleton to break the stigma around substance use so that people can feel empowered to speak up and then get the help that they need and deserve because no one has to suffer alone. Arm reduction by its very nature, it's intended to meet people where they're at in acknowledgement and respect for their unique experience. And this is so important for us here at Carleton given the diversity of our community People come to us at all stages in their lives and from very different backgrounds. I've been sharing my own story on campus to help create a safe space for people to share their own. And I found that saying the truth, speaking the truth sets us free. And so does accepting other people's truths in our hearts. From the perspective of the user, substance use is not a problem. It's an attempted solution to the real problems, the deep problems of their lives. And here at Carleton, we continue the work that's being done in our award-winning Mental Health Framework 2.0 to promote well-being across our campus community. We're ensuring that we offer a very wide range of services to support students in a way that feels right to every person as opposed to a one-size-fits-all approach. Two good examples are our 24-7 uh, online service through EmpowerMe and uh, our Therapy Dog program that is also online. 
We're proud to work with Recovery Day Ottawa to break the stigma around substance use and to promote harm reduction. This is always important, but especially so now as we continue to face the additional challenges of COVID-19. Everybody, please reach out, get the help that you need and deserve. Even with seven arrows through the heart, healing is always possible.